Hey YouTube, what is going on? It's Huncho here, back with another video. Today's video is going to focus on two things. Some FPS boosting tricks that NVIDIA posted about here on their System Latency Optimization Guide page. But since they didn't describe how to actually go through and do these, I'm going to show you guys right now. And the second part of this video is going to talk about NVIDIA Reflux and whether you should use it or not, depending on your unique situation. Please hit that subscribe button if you're not already, if you're new to the channel, or even if you've been here for a while. I'm going to keep producing content like this moving forward, and it makes it a lot easier to continue searching up these topics and finding out this information for you guys when I see that it actually helps you guys and improves your gameplay. Okay, so I have two links down in the description, one for file dropper, one for Google Drive. So first, we're gonna talk about the MSI utility. So this is also gonna factor in with the IRQ sharing that they talk about in the NVIDIA site. So if you've never done this before, you wanna make sure that these are all supported in MSI mode right here. See how my PSIE controller is not supported in MSI mode? If you do this without knowing if something is MSI supported, you can completely brick your system and have to either system restore or go through safe mode and uncheck the MSI mode. If you have an ethernet connection through Intel, what I've found is using MSI mode for it actually increases my ping. But I know other people with like Realtek ethernet, it actually lowers your ping. So I recommend trying that through MSI mode. So we're just gonna check the box here if it's not checked. For our GPU, likely these are already gonna be checked. And then you're gonna change your interrupt priority to high. So what that does, if you go to run, if you go to run MS info 32, and you go to hardware resources, IRQs, you'll see that before your IRQ for your GPU will likely be up here somewhere. But now, it's in the negative, so it's gonna be all the way down here at the bottom. What we wanna go through and make sure is that our IRQs through here are not doubled up. So each thing has one IRQ. If you've gone through my previous videos, you'll see me in device manager, devices by connection, and I've disabled devices such as high precision event timer, the SM bus, flash controllers, root ports that are not being used. This is what helps alleviate IRQ sharing, where if those devices were still active, it's possible that they're sharing an IRQ with something else on your system. So the combination of MSI mode and disabling the devices that you're not using will help alleviate your IRQ sharing. I have in my Discord a bunch of guides that if you wanna go through and do things yourself or follow through on my previous videos. But as you can see in this guide right here, it will show you alleviate IRQ sharing and it'll just go over what exactly I just said and MSI mode as well. The next thing is GPU write combining. I have a registry edit in here, disable write combining. This is for Nvidia only. I'm not sure if it works for AMD, so I didn't include that, but the MSI utility part works for either AMD or Nvidia. Next, we're gonna talk about the process scheduling quantum modes. I've created separate registry files for this. So basically the higher hex equals more context switching. And when you have a lower number here in the process scheduling, you have a longer quantum. So that means that you're gonna have less context switching, which means when you're switching between Fortnite and you tab out to go to Discord, it's gonna take a longer time. So this is the most beneficial when you don't run a lot of things in the background when you're playing and you don't tab out very often. As it says here, your input latency on your mouse, keyboard, or controller are not going to be affected by changing this because it's given the priority over the CPU threads anyways. So I recommend trying out the lower numbers first because most likely you're on a higher number. The lower numbers will also provide you with a smoother gameplay experience, whereas the higher numbers will feel more choppy. I've shown interrupt CPU affinity in my previous videos. So I'm not going to go too in depth with it, but what you're going to do is you're going to go under the time 64, run it as an administrator. You're going to open up device manager. 
you're going to view devices by connection. You're going to scroll down until you find your GPU. Mine's right here. Right click, properties, PCI bus 2, device 0, function 0. So mine's here at the top, but you can also just press N and it'll go through whatever letter you click on. So when we get here, in task manager under performance, you can see how many cores and processors you have. So I have the same number of cores as processors because I don't have hyper threading. So for me, I set my mask for my GPU to CPU2. And then for my USB, which is here, 020. Mine's also at the top. I set for CPU4, which is CPU5, because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but CPU4 in here. So then you're also going to want to use the connected PCIe or PCI to PCI controller. So you're going to right click on whatever is connected to your GPU. Properties 011. So here's my PCIe controller 011. I'm going to set it for the same mask as my GPU, the so CPU2. Now for these, if you have hyper threading and you have double the amount of processors as cores, you can try it both ways of using only the core like I did. So it would be even numbers is the cores when you have hyper threading. If this was a four core, eight processors, you could try it that way. Or you can also do the thread as well. So it would be core, thread, core, thread. So I would do it like this for the GPU. Lastly, we're going to talk about processor idle states. So in your NVIDIA control panel and under your game, when you put your power management mode to prefer maximum performance, it's going to run your card at the highest level regarding of your GPU usage, but it's going to increase your power consumption. The same thing applies for your CPU, where if you go to settings, system, power and sleep, additional power settings, and you use the ultimate performance or the high performance power plans or mine from a previous video, your CPU is gonna have a constant high voltage and it's gonna stay at a high clock speed. Now you need to be aware of your CPU temperatures and your GPU temperatures. If your temperature gets too high and too hot, you're not only gonna experience throttling, which is gonna cause hitches in your gameplay, but it can also damage your devices if it runs too hot for too long. But if you know that you have good cooling on your system, you can also search up your motherboard and say ASUS disable CPU C states and find a form or a guide to show you how to disable your C states. This will inflict what I showed in the power settings through your BIOS instead of Windows which will help lower your input latency and also increase your FPS. If you do not want to run your GPU at full throttle speed the whole time, I use EVGA Precision X1, which allows you to boost lock your GPU, and you can also decrease the clock speed if you don't want it to run as fast. Click Save and click Apply, and you'll see that my GPU is still running at a boost speed, but it's at a lower clock speed, which will give me more stable gameplay if I'm having issues with my GPU. Now on to NVIDIA Reflex. So with the new drivers in Fortnite, you can apply what is essentially low latency mode directly into Fortnite rather than running through the driver. So when your CPU gives the frame out, your GPU immediately reads it. However, some people think that it's a glitch that Fortnite is running uncapped or that your frames are actually capped in game and it's just a visual glitch. However, NVIDIA says in this guide that when you're using NVIDIA Reflex, it's designed for when your system is running uncapped FPS. So I monitored my system throughout two different games, one with my textures on Epic and one with my textures on Low. You can see that my CPU temperatures minimum was 59 and maximum was 72 while staying around 62 to 65. My max CPU usage with textures on Epic was 81% but it stayed around the low 70s to high 60s. My GPU usage maxed out at 79 with my textures on Epic, but you can see that it had a lot of dips in usage when I was playing. 
This hard dip in usage actually happened in the middle of a fight and it caused my FPS to drop. This is an example of why Fortnite is unoptimized and one of the downsides of Nvidia Reflex as I will show you with the frame rate down below. So here you can see my FPS was staying around 360 to 330 the whole time, getting up to like 380 while playing. But then at that same spot, I had a hard dip in FPS all the way down to 123 in the middle of a fight. Going from an input latency of 360 FPS to 120 made it very jittery on my screen, even though I only have a 240 hertz monitor. You can see that my frame times were pretty consistent and then it started getting more spikes and more spikes in the middle of a fight and you see the hard spikes here. What I noticed from playing on uncapped FPS compared to capped FPS is your frame times are more consistent. This leads to smoother gameplay. Even though your GPU is running at a constant speed, the amount of usage it gets when you're staying at a steady 240 FPS compared to a uncapped FPS where it's always trying to give you the highest frames possible led to more stutters in my gameplay. These high spikes at the end I was already dead. With my textures on low, I had about 30 lower FPS on average when I was actually in the game. As I saw my FPS going from about 300 to 310 all the way up to like 360 being maxed. Whereas with textures on Epic, I was able to get to about 380 FPS and sit there for a little bit longer rather than just a high spike of like 370 FPS with textures on low. As you can see with the frame times again, this was when the game started. They weren't too inconsistent, but these high spikes made the gameplay more jittery. Video reflex, it's gonna depend on your system itself. If I was using a 360 hertz monitor where my max FPS was sitting around the 360 hertz, then it wouldn't bother me that I, my FPS was only going about 20 over my monitor. But with my FPS 100 over the hertz of my monitor, it made the gameplay a lot less smooth. Now, if you're 44 hertz and when you're uncapped, you're only getting about 120 to 150 hertz, try running it on the new driver with NVIDIA Reflex. Your experience might be better than running on the 441.41 from my previous video. We've seen people with very expensive PCs not only complaining about issues of FPS drops that are in Fortnite, but also other issues of slower performance with their older tools. As they feel NVIDIA and Fortnite somehow colluded together and slowed down the performance of their cards to get you to buy new graphics cards. Kind of like the same thing Apple did with their phones. Is this true? Who knows, but from my experience of playing on a new driver compared to 441.41 and doing all the steps in my previous video, I thought I was having an okay experience, but as soon as I went back to just having low latency mode on with the older driver, it was like, how was I even playing on the new driver? It was so inconsistent. Yo, please subscribe if you have not already. I really appreciate it. Peace out, guys.